The 49ers are not to be trusted on Christian McCaffrey's injury, I think, at this point. He's not going to be with us this year. Don't bank on him. Don't count on him to return. Larry, the 49ers are not to be trusted when it comes to updating injuries. Uh Uh-oh, here we go. I know we live in a world where now we want more transparency with injuries than ever before. You also want your team to protect its inside information for, you know, pre-gaming skullduggery against your opponents. But um, every single time Shanahan talks about how Christian McCaffrey is a week away from being about a week away from being a week away, you get a follow-up report from Adam Schefter, which says something entirely different. The 49ers are not to be trusted on Christian McCaffrey's injury, I think, at this point. Shanahan says he's weeks away from a return. Things are going well. We've also had it reported that this Achilles tendonitis has appeared in both legs. It's in both Achilles. He's got double the itis for double the Achilles. And the timetable is now a major question mark, according to Schefter, that he returns at all this season. So which is it? Which is it? Was well, I mean, Germany a trip that made everybody go, oh, this is getting better, we'll see you soon? Or did he get kind of news in Germany that says, oh, by the way, this isn't your other Achilles too, and it's not good at all? The Niners said that, yes, he has it, Achilles tendonitis in both legs. Obviously, that tells you the seriousness of it, you know, just that alone. Mm-hmm. But um, I think what Shanahan, the way Shanahan termed it, is that he was having pain in the Achilles that he went to Germany to seek some pain remedies and some solutions and that they feel like they've got the pain in both legs quieted down. And now they're going to attempt to ramp him up into football, you know, related activities to see what exactly happens from there. My stance on it, Damon, and I don't know uh, if, if I've said this directly with you or not, but my stance on it is, You know, the 49ers, you know, right now they have a replacement in J.P. Mason, right? But they obviously, you know, he's on pace to lead the 49ers in carries and to break Frank Gore's franchise record, which was set in 2006. Damon, he's on pace right now to break it by 75 carries. This pace that Mason is on is likely not sustainable. The problem is they don't seem to trust Patrick Taylor. Garendo is a non-factor altogether because he has no running back instincts. And so I understand, you know, that, that they, they're trying to ramp him up. My belief is that the 49ers ought to, in their minds, just, just put a line through Christian. Like, he's not going to be with us this year. And then anything he gives you will be gravy. Don't bank on him. Don't count on him to return. Act going forward. Act like he doesn't exist. And if he shows up in week 12, ready to roll or week eight or week seven or week 14 or week 17 or come play up whenever he shows up, be pleasantly surprised. That's, I think, the best best plan of attack, because these things, Damon, are not just it's not just football. It's an emotional factor, too. right? Right. There's the emotional factor of hey, man, are we going to have our best player or not? And if everybody's kind of looking over their shoulder for the cavalry to come, you know, that's not a good position to be in. You want to focus on playing on the guys that are there. I'd even trade or try to sign or, or you know, add another running back if I don't. I, I don't feel confident, Damon. They haven't used Patrick Taylor at all, and Garendo can't do it. So they don't have a backup running back to J.P. Mason, and they can't have two special teams backs that they can't use from scrimmage. So either use Patrick Taylor from scrimmage or cut Patrick Taylor and go get another back because you can't put this on Mason the whole year. He's got 11 more carries than any other back in the league right now, and he's on pace to obliterate the franchise mark. So he might be able to do it. He probably can't. They're probably going to need a a secondary back somewhere along the way. And for me, I wouldn't bank on Christian. Unless you know something I don't, Larry, Matt Breed is a free agent. I mean, I think that that's a guy that you could sign off the street today and ask him to carry the ball eight times on Sunday, and he'd be able to do it. They looked at him. I mean, they just had him, Damon. So it's like they had a real close look. They're not like, hey, I'm wondering what what Matt's got left. They know what he's got left. And... um. I don't know what to say about that other well, than the thing, Larry, you know what we left. also looked at 
They looked at Patrick Taylor and said, oh, yeah, he's on the team. Yet they don't use him. So, like, what the Niners do to evaluate their running backs, it's a little... It's a little weird to me, right? Like I, I there it's it's a little it's a little goofy. I mean, I'll give you the names who are free agents. I just looked this up. Brita, Jarek McKinnon, Boston Scott, Latavius Murray, Leonard Fournette. Those are the five best free agent running backs that are available. Of that group, I kind of like Leonard Fournette, but I realize he's a bigger back and he's not as fast, but he can catch the ball out of the backfield. Look, none of these guys are an answer. They're just backups. They're backing up a guy who is an answer. Jordan Mason is no understudy. This is not a backup running back. The 49ers no, yeah. have two starting running backs on their team, and thank God that they do because they need both of them because they might not have one of them in Christian McCaffrey. But you but, do he, but he's not going to last, Damon. No, That's not, the question because the Niners are – Play the player or get another player. <laughs> it's just that simple. And it, it, look, it, it feels like Kyle – is going to make sure that Jordan Mason has Achilles tendonitis in at least one of his legs by the end of this year if he keeps using him like that. So um, something needs to change. Something needs to change roster-wise for the Niners in this backfield, which is just so funny, man. I remember you and I talking about how this is like the deepest backfield ever, and it's not even week five yet, and we're talking about running back depth being a problem. Um, You can never have enough. It's like starting pitching, Larry. You can never have enough of it. Well, it really is true. I mean, look at Shanahan. You can never have enough running backs. I, I've always believed that like day three running backs in the draft and draft and running backs after the draft, they all make sense. Why? Because you can never have enough backs. You know, we listed the guys who are free agents. We also listed a couple of guys who could be traded. But there's also a whole slew of younger backs who are on practice squads that if you want to pluck them and put them on your active roster, you can. And Frank Gore's kid is one of those guys in Buffalo. And the, you know, there's a bunch of guys. So, um, you know, they, they, there's a lot of choices out there. It's not like they don't have any choices. It's not like, Oh my God, there there's all the running backs are gone. No, there's, there's tradable running backs, signable running backs, uh, practice squad running backs. There's a lot of backs out there, so they'll find one, but I just don't think, I'm a little concerned about their situation because let's just say they got into the game this week and Mason, for whatever reason, pulled a hammy first quarter. Well, what are you doing the rest of the game? What are you going to, who are you going to run with? Garendo is so raw. Patrick Taylor, if he's good, I got to wonder why we haven't seen any carries and it's October 2nd. So he looked pretty good in the Raider game, but if he was really good, don't you think they would have used him? Probably. So, I mean, they, they're they they're shockingly thin. And if they lost Mason in a game, they might have to go to like a Debo-type running game Yeah, for a big portion of the game. If we're thinking about this, it's something John Lynch has got to be thinking about. And again, there, there are sign him yeah. off the street options right now who have had success in this league. I would encourage the 49ers to take a, a another lap around Matt Breida. Uh, again, Kyle, I think, is so busy for looking for perfect. He lets pretty good pass him by sometimes. Thanks for watching. Tune into the Damon Bruce Show live on YouTube every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific.